So I've been following along with a lot of different RTS games, and one such game that I've had my eye on for a while is Stormgate. Now, Stormgate is a next-gen RTS that is made from the same developers who made StarCraft II, WarCraft III, and people who have a lot of experience in the game, and it's under the development tag of Frost Giant Studios. And of course, I shouldn't need to remind you that those two RTS games, WarCraft III as well as StarCraft II, are some of the hailed as the best RTS games in history. Now, of course, that's not to besmirch any of the other great RTSs, such as Age of Empires, Age of Mythology, personally for me, but it is quite a bit. And here's everything we know about the game. So to start, the game kind of looks very, on its surface, a lot like StarCraft II. It's a very similar HUD, it seems like a very simplistic approach, and the unit composition, the or I should say the faction composition, is very similar to what you may have seen for StarCraft II. Uh, but the updated graphics as well as the live service that's going to be put into this game is very, very promising. And it could be one of the biggest RTS games coming out here in the near future. So the three races that are available to play are the Defenders of Earth, the humans, of course, and then two warring alien factions, the warlike Infernals, which are like a demon style kind of faction race, whatever you want to call it as well as the technologically advanced angelic race of the Celestial Armada. Essentially, on the surface, it kind of feels like Terran, Zerg, and Protoss, just in a different light, a different look. Um, and it, there are some similarities through, if you want to look at like the storytelling and all that. Um, but if I'm um, to be honest, the game is shaping up to look incredible, and just really well done. And it seems like there is an ever-evolving campaign, there is co-op against AI, and a number of different situations that you would see very similar to StarCraft II, and of course, the competition of 1v1s with the idea of moving into 3v3s, and I'm sure other different types of brackets. The main point of contact that I would say for this game is that it is free to play, which is absolutely huge. That is incredible uh, uh, to hear. For a game that looks this well done and this well polished, for it to be free is just a that's amazing. It's, I mean, seriously, we don't we don't really see that that often. The game is looking to be in early access on August 13th. However, if you were one of the founders who chipped in during the startup of the game of the Kickstarter, um, or you purchased the early access packs, which have some cosmetics as well as like heroes and other various things that don't necessarily directly improve gameplay, um, you if you purchase one of those, you'll be able to access that on July 30th about two weeks before everyone else. Which I actually kind of like this model, is like I don't mind paying extra for some style or some flavor, but don't change the core aspect of the game. Yeah, don't, don't really have these pay to win features, you know? Regardless of what your thoughts are of the RTS genre, this game is looking to have a huge impact on everything that we know as far as an RTS game. So it's, it's very exciting. If you are interested in other RTS games, there's one game that I'm keeping an eye on and they just dropped the new trailer for the game, which is Age of Mythology Retold, which is an upgraded version of the original Age of Mythology game that came out, I don't know, 30 years ago, however old I am. I made a reaction video and you can check that out here. Otherwise, stay caffeinated, folks.